Hey everyone, Eric here. And today we're gonna to talk about what makes a good person to add to your model. So when I say adding a good person to your model, I don't mean like a good Samaritan, someone who does volunteer work. What I mean is the good fit for your model. And good fit is sort of up to you to determine those parameters. So for me, I think about things like the type of person, whether they're doing an activity or they're standing or sitting, level of detail, whether they're 2D or 3D, and then stylistically, whether they're wearing the proper clothes or the color, or they're engaging again with the space the way that I want. So what I wanna do is take a look at where to find them and then how to customize them to fit the style and look of your model that you want. So let's get to it. So I've got some people here. These are just my, my little warm up people. We're gonna go ahead and recreate those. I'm just going to get rid of them. All that hard work gone. Let's do it again. So I wanna start, um, you can start in a few different places when we talk about people. Obviously when you start a new model, like if I start a new one here, we have a default scale figure. Now uh, that's great as a starting point, but I don't think most people use the scale figure in their actual drawings. It's kind of just there as a placeholder. Um, I want to go a little bit more specific to this space that I'm working in right now. This is kind of a co-working space, and I'm going to link uh, to this model in the description. So if you want to build this model yourself, I'll show you how to do that. But let's go ahead and populate this kitchen so that it looks a little bit more, um, you know, you can kind of like show people in that space. So again, I've got a section cut here so I can turn the walls and ceilings off. Let's go ahead and find our people. So I'm going to go up to Window 3D Warehouse, probably the easiest place to start. For most people. And if I just keep the search terms super general, just people, let's see what comes up. Now I'm going to get a variety. I'm going to get photographs. We're going to talk about each one. Again, pros and cons, silhouettes, um, face me's, and then of course, somewhere down here, if I keep scrolling, I'm going to find fully fledged 3D people. Let's look at each one of those. So I might want to start by adding something a little bit more specific. Like if I'm not ready to go to 3D or I don't want that geometry in my model, I might start with a simple 2D or you can try typing in face me. Now, again, this um, assumes that the people who upload these add this to the terminology, they add it to the name of the file or in the description so it can be found. But let's go with a face me. Let's just go back with two people here and just kind of start at the very beginning. And I'm going to grab this guy here. He looks pretty good. He looks cool, like he wants to work in my co-working space. So I'm going to download him and load him directly into my model. I'm going to explode him because remember, he's actually a face me, so uh, I don't need the whole um, outer shell. So now I could try you know, moving him around. Let's see, he's um, getting himself a coffee or something. He looks fine. There's nothing wrong with that. But stylistically, sometimes I like to get rid of the uh, color. So what I'm going to do is just make a copy of him. I'm using the keyboard modifier here to make a copy using the move tool. And then I may need to make him unique first. It depends on how this model is built. Sometimes I can apply color to the outside. Sometimes I want to go inside and apply a new color to the face. So in this case, what I'm going to do is add like a charcoal gray, like a dark gray, and see if that works. Sometimes what I'll do too is pull back the opacity. So anything above 70% is going to give you a shadow. So maybe I don't want to pull back too much. Maybe just want to pull back a little bit. And there we go. So we can kind of compare the difference just really quickly of here. I'm going to just kind of um, move them next to each other. Just kind of pretend like they're making a coffee. And then maybe I'll hide that guy and I'll kind of just spin around and say, okay, how's that look? That looks kind of cool. And then if we switch that, I'm going to unhide and hide him and get rid of my hidden geometry and look around. So again, I kind of like that neutral one. I kind of like uh, the one that's got a little bit less detail, but again, personal preference. Let's leave them both in right now because I've got a few more people that I want to compare and see what's going to be the right fit for me. So I'm Open up 3D Warehouse again, and I'm going to come over here. I'm going to leave this people on here. And I'm going to scroll down. And I'm going to find a different kind of person. This one's also going to be 2D but not a 2D face me. So you can see here, some of these look like more realistic. So you can see that some of these are actual photographs of people. So I'm gonna see if I can find one. It doesn't really matter which one. The problem is some of them come in as groups. I don't exactly want like a group of people. I'm just looking for an individual. 
Walking the dog maybe won't work. Let's try if we type in the word photo. Does that help? I don't know if that helps us. It may, it may make it a little bit more confusing. Let's see here. I'm going to click this guy and I'm going to download him and see if this is going to work. And I'm going to place him here. So you can see it's a similar guy to what I had before, but in this case it's a photo, so he looks a lot more realistic. You can see that uh, while there's no geometry in the face in the object or the component himself, it's, that's because it's all being driven from a photo. Now if I move him again back into space, the level of detail in the model itself though is still very conceptual, right? I'm not rendering this, I'm just going to do an output from SketchUp, so he may have too much detail. I may actually want to pull back on that, but maybe I like the way he's standing and maybe I like the way he's dressed and I like sort of he looks cool, he looks hip, he looks like a guy that I want in the space. But ne not necessarily looking at his face, I feel like that might be distracting a little bit for the viewer. Remember, the attention as a designer is on the space. The people are just there for context. So I may want to just for fun, let's for comparison, make that copy again, make that unique. Come over here, grab that same sort of transparent charcoal and paste that into place. And again, you can kind of look if I move him even next to his friend. These guys are starting to work together. You'll notice that the only difference here between these two is that one of them has the inner edges. And if you start with a photograph, then you can most often, not always, most often they're cut out. So you're getting just the silhouette. Here I've got, you know, this was drawn. So this is probably traced off of a photograph. So you get sort of these almost like cartoonish inner lines. So if that bugs you, or if that's not the style you're going for, going for just the simple silhouette may be the best thing. But either way, the nice thing about whether you go grab a face me or you grab a photograph, the cool thing about adding your own color is that whether it has internal lines or not, they tend to work well together because from a distance, I mean, can you tell that one has lines and one doesn't? You know, not really. I think they work together as a group. So let's go ahead and look at one last place or one last type. I'm going to look in the same place, which is 3D Warehouse, but one last type of person you may want to consider adding to your model. And this one is going to be, I'm going to go with people again, and I'm going to type in 3D. And 3D is going to offer up a different kind of model. Now, you've got to be careful with 3D for a few reasons. Number one is that you might get stuff like this where these people look very cartoonish. They're 3D, but the level of detail is fairly low. That's going to look weird. You might get people that are 3D, but they don't have any materials. That might be kind of weird. You also might get, and I don't see any here, maybe some of these, like this one has 400,000 polygons. You might get a person that is very, very, very high poly, and it may be too high for the your needs. So I'm gonna grab this guy because he's only got about 2,000 polys. He looks like he's um, ready to do some work or waiting for his coffee to brew. Let's go ahead and pop him in. At least he wants to be part of the club. He says, come on guys, what are you guys talking about? I want in. So let's bring him in. Now, why the three guy, 3D? We're going to add the extra polygons. What are some advantages and what are some disadvantages? Well, one advantage is you can see when I rotate around the model, these two guys, they're always going to be staring at me, whether I like it or not, whether I'm uncomfortable with it or not, they're going to keep looking at me. Whereas this guy, you can see he's 3D. He's not a face me component. He's going to just look wherever you stand because when you rotate around him, he's 3D. So you can catch him at any angle, which is pretty cool. And also with rendering, you know, with a 3D person, um, if I check his geometry count here, you can see because he's 3D, light and shadow, like for example, if I come over here and open up my shadows, you can see when the shadows are turned on and I adjust the time of day, you can see the shadows are adjusting on this guy here. So maybe it's easier to see without the um, uh, hidden geometry. So you can see that the shadows are actually moving around. So if you rendered that, you're going to get the shadows under the chin. You're going to get the shadows under the arm. You're going to get more realism with the way the light reacts. So I'm going to turn the shadows off. It's actually not what I want to do. I'm not going to render this for today. I just want to um, just kind of stay in sort of conceptual land for the moment. Conceptual land, it's the one of the less popular lands at Disneyland. So now 
the same thing though, you know, if I've got this guy in my model, I do like the fact that I can spin around, but again, I may be distracted by the look on his face, or I may not like the way that he's dressed. So lastly, just like the other two that I've shown you, we can always come over here, grab this same guy, I'm gonna explode him, and I'm gonna make him unique. I'm gonna come over, I'm gonna go inside, and I'm gonna grab all that geometry, and I'm just going to paste that same sort of charcoal gray color that I've been using, and I can go ahead and do that. now. Why bother doing that? The whole point is, is that unlike these face me guys, whereas if you look, they're always gonna be facing you. So like their pose will always be the same, no matter where you look. Even if you used a silhouette, the cool thing about that is if I captured this room from two different angles, like one from this angle, and then one from this angle, you can see that the guy is engaging more with the space. He's not turning to look at the camera. He's staying, and looking at whatever it is that you want him to look at. Of course, if you put somebody else next to him, he would be stay. He would be engaging with that person, or he might be, um, if he's sitting, he would be engaging with the furniture better than a 2D face me person would. So I'm gonna go ahead and line up, um, I'm gonna bring him back all together, and we're gonna wrap up by saying, by just kind of, you know, Understanding that there's no wrong answers here and that ultimately you can cherry pick or pick and choose from any of these options based on uh, the look and feel that you're going for. So that's it. That was my quick review for working with 2D people in your model. Now we love 2D people. It gives a sense of scale. It also gives a sense of activity. So it shows you know you can put people actually doing things or engaging with the space. And that's really cool because ultimately the viewer is going to transport themselves into the model. And you can do that sometimes by leaving people out and they can picture themselves in the space, but other times having somebody in there not only creates a sense of scale, but it also gives them a sense of, well, what is, you know, what's going on in this space and how are people using it? And that's how I see myself using it when I see somebody else using it, because that's what we do as people. We end up just mirroring um, other people. So... I'm gonna leave you on that note. So hope you learned something new today. If you haven't uh, already done so, go into 3D Warehouse, try typing in different keywords, pop them into your model and play around. I mean, the cool thing about SketchUp is always that it invites that experimentation and ultimately uh, use the version of the people or the multiple versions of people that are best for your project and your needs. So I'm gonna leave you there. I'm gonna say thanks for watching as always and see you next time.